Good afternoon. Uh, my name is Tom. I'm from the Royal National College for the Blind in Hereford, um, the RMC for short. It's a specialist residential college uh, for young people with visual impairment aged 16 to 25, uh, with a range of vocational and academic qualifications um, with individualised uh, timetables. And I'm Philippa Bass. I work for British Blind Sport, and the aim is to get more people active in whatever way they want to be more active. We've kind of just said yes, it. Yeah, Yeah, so I think um, I'm going to talk a little bit more about sports at RNC uh, in, in a little while. But the college um, is is all designed for. Uh, it's been it's been how uh, we're celebrating our 150th year this year. Um, we now no longer have an adult program, so we are just a specialist college for students aged 16 to 25. Um, but a lot of what we do is about developing independence and life skills to go on to the future, so whether that's going to university, into employment, uh, or into, again, other types of further education, um, we're kind of preparing students for life after RNC. At British Blind Sport, we work with people that want to take part in sport as a recreational hobby, something to enjoy, grassroots, so you get to play in leagues and clubs, and then all the way up to the Paralympic Games under the vision impairment pathway. We have loads of different programmes but our main aim is to work with national governing bodies of sport and make sure their sports are inclusive for people with, with vision impairments. Okay. Great, so the next question, why sport? So can I just have a show of hands? How many, how many of you in the room are currently accessing sport or any type of physical activity uh, at the moment? Okay, brilliant. Okay, so there's, there's a fair few of you, okay. So, I think what's really important for us today, we're going to give you the opportunity later to try some sports, but to talk to you a little bit around the different opportunities that are out there within sports, different clubs that are out there, out there um, and kind of the benefits from sport as well. Uh, there's a few other boards, so goal setting, confidence, communication, teamwork, leadership, um, as well as just making you feel healthier and better within yourselves. Um, yeah. yeah. So. Tom's talked about different sports, so when you put your hands up, shout out a couple of different things that you do. What sports do you like playing? Go for it. <laughs> <laughs> I do spinning and set. Yeah, Yes, so like recreational, physical activity. Don't you take part in any sports, like team sports? No? All those sports we've got there, so I'm listing football, goalball, cricket, tennis, judo, they all have a route to participate if you have visual impairment and other impairments as well in the recreational pathways. And in a minute, after this we talk, we're going to go into the activity room where we're going to show you a range of those different sports to showcase how they are adapted for people to play, basically. So it's just to let you know, there's loads and loads of sports out there you can participate in. Don't just sometimes people think, I can't play the mainstream side, there's always adaptations to the game. And for more information, you can go to our website, which lists adaptations as well as how to get involved. So we're going to show you a couple of sports, and these are kind of like three big sports within the country. You'll know, because obviously football's our national game. And we've got some little videos, because you don't want us to stand up here and waffle. It's easier to kind of show you a nice little video about adaptations. In football, the game is to score more goals than the other team. The game has two formats partially sighted and blind. Both the team games play with four outfield players and a sighted goalkeeper. Partially sighted football is played indoors with constant lights on a hard surface with a weighted ball. Blind football is played outdoors on a pitch with sideboards and an audible ball. All players wear a blindfold. People call out Voy so that other players know they are approaching. The guides support play. For more information, email us on info at britishblindsport.org.uk or call us on 01926 424 247. In Goldwall, the so like the video just said, there's two, two types of uh, football, partial sight football and blind football. 
Um, the Posh Site National League and the Boy Football National League uh, take place monthly. Um, and myself and Philip will be able to give you more information if football is something of interest to you of how you can potentially get involved with some of these different clubs uh, around the country. Um, the mainstream version of the mainstream, um, not mainstream, I'm getting confused now. Both versions actually take part in the FA Disability Cup, which is actually held on BT Sport every year. So even if it's a takeaway, it's to showcase BT are showing different adaptation versions of the game as well. So every June they hold that, so make sure you download your BT app for the, for the month just to watch it. And obviously the RNC both take part in both of those leagues. Next one. In goalball, the game is to score more goals than the other team. It's a team game specifically designed for participants with sight loss. There are three players on each team aiming to score in the opposing team's goal. An audible ball is used and it's played indoors with tactile markings. Everyone wears eye shades. The ball is thrown by hand across the ground so that it crosses the defending goal line. The other team must prevent the ball from going in the goal. It's suitable for all ages, sight levels and abilities. For more information, email us on info at britishblindsport.org.uk or call us on 01926 so who's heard of goalball? Ah, oh, well done, loads of hands. Goalball is actually a game developed for people with visual impairments. So it's really, really great that we have a national um, NGB, Goalball UK, who actually deliver three different divisions within their league, and that's for people that are just new to the game, people that have been around the game for a little bit longer, and people that are kind of went on and advanced onto the pathway. And again, the RNC, so that's a repeating thing, enter all of those divisions. And our last sport that we're going to have a little video for is tennis. In tennis, the game is to hit the ball over the net in a way that your opponent can't return it. It is played with an audible tennis ball, Tactile lines and the number of bounces you're allowed before hitting the wall depends on your level of sight loss. It is an individual sport but also can be played as part of a team. To start the game, the player verbally calls out, ready, ready, play. Right. Ready, ready, play. It's a really adaptable game suitable for all ages, sight levels and abilities. For more information, email us on info. So again, who knew there was an audible version of tennis? Well, we've got you there, but that's something then to come and have a go next door, because we've got tennis next door, but also get involved in your local tennis club. So all your local tennis clubs should be able to have recreational sessions that can go along. And the greatest thing about all those different sports that you've just heard about is you can play with friends that's sighted, you can play with friends with the um, different disabilities, everybody can be involved. If sport's not your thing, at BBS we have an active at home programme. So who's heard of Joe Wiggs? Yeah, basically we have our own version of this and it's audible led workouts. So you don't have to look at your screen even when they're on Zoom or on YouTube. They will describe all the exercises and we do things from heat to strength and tone, building up those muscles, to yoga, pilates and leg spuns and tums. So there's a range of all different things for anybody that wants to be involved in it. And again, just go to the website and they're all free and we have a live workout week every month and then they're all put on YouTube. So you can do them whenever you like. We want more people to be involved in this because you can do this any time of the day. Over to me. Okay, so RNC College in Hereford, we actually have the first of its type, Sports Academy. The Sports Academy 
gives opportunities to aspiring athletes in their chosen sport and it can run alongside their academic and vocational courses. So students can access up to 10 hours a week of a chosen sport uh, on their timetable. So we have students that are currently studying with us who will be studying three A-levels for example, as well as have their independent skills, mobility training, uh, IT skills embedded into that timetable. If they're one of if they've got an interest in sport and a keen interest in kind of getting involved in a sport and potentially going into some of the national kind of teams and pathways, then um, we've got a, a range of different sports we offer within the Sports Academy. Um, goal, football and judo I'd say would be our three main sports of participation. Uh, six of the current eight Great Britain men's goalball team are former RNC students. Um, I think five of the seven Great Britain women's female team in goalball are also former RNC students and there's three or four of the England blind football team that are currently um, are, are also former RNC students. So we do have kind of a direct link to the national kind of pathways for these for, for students. Um, some of our coaches, uh, not me, but some of the other guys um, are also coaches for the national team. So the head of our sports academy, uh, academy, Aaron, he's also the Great Britain women's global coach, uh, and Adam, who is the head coach of the England blind football team, as well as Dylan Malpass, who's a sighted goalkeeper for the England blind football team. So students are getting access to some probably the best coaching uh, in the country uh, at the college, which is which is great for the students to be able to progress. Um, we're also a talented athlete scholarship scheme centre, uh, so TAS for short. Uh, that basically means that uh, students can be nominated through their national government bodies, um, which just allows them a little bit more um, contact with stuff like nutrition, um, as well as kind of strength and conditioning as well. Uh, yeah, next. However, it's not all about elite sport RNC. Um, something that we that I tend to find, I meet with a lot of families uh, of young people that are considering RNC as their next step, and potentially within their mainstream setting, sport has been a struggle for them, mainly because it's not always been accessible, um, and we often find that families will say that my the young person or is not interested in sport. So we try and change that perception for families and young people when they come to RNC. Um, there's a quote at the bottom that says, we get two thirds of our student cohort into at least two hours of recreational sport a week. Um, that was last year. Early signs this year that that's going to be close to the 75-80% of students accessing two hours of a chosen sport a week. Um, it doesn't have to be, like I said, at elite level. It can just be purely alongside their timetable or during uh, their free time to go and access some goalball, tennis, football, boccia, archery, there's all sorts of stuff that we do. We've got a tandem cycling club, a running club as well. Um, we also go down to a local rowing centre, so just trying to offer as many opportunities as we can to students um, within sport. Um, and I think there's so much that sport can bring as well, the social side, the teamwork uh, gains to that uh, within our students. and. Um, we're often here there and everywhere on the weekend, like Philippa mentioned, competing in goalball, football, uh, all these different leagues. Um, so that's a little bit about the sport at RNC and the opportunities that, that we offer. Um, but like I said, not everyone is sporty. Uh, so if someone, a student comes to us and does an hour of goalball or an hour of tennis a week, then we see that as a, as a, as a game and a, and a positive step. Um, and it might not be sport, it might be gym, gym-based stuff, you mentioned spinning and yoga earlier. Um, we've got a student gym at the college as well, which allows students to have that access to, to physical activity. Um, so yeah. So yeah, now really, we're almost time for you guys to come and try next door and try some of these different sports. We are going to be limited with some of the little space that we've got, but um, I've been here a couple of years prior to when, uh, before COVID and there's always been some competitive games, goalball, uh, not goalball, boccia, uh, we've got some indoor art, soft play archery which is pretty cool, it's the first time I've seen it today, uh, but that's really good, as well as some tennis, cricket, blind football, and we have got goalball in there, so if you want to come and have a little look at some of these sports we've just spoken about, come and give them a go, then uh, please do pop next door.
Um, and yeah, has anyone got any questions on Tuivo Me or Philip Burr about anything we've spoken about? Perfect. Yeah, you're out. Just one, do you have any resources for sort of secondary phase mainstream schools that can be disseminated to like same and stuff? Do you go yeah. to not talk about one? So on uh, the BBS website, they're actually how to coach. So it's the first steps into the game. Um, there are actually new resources where it's online a qualification through UK Sport is uh, going to be launched in the new year. So they're coming as well. So that's uh, an accredited qualification. Global UK do some stuff. Do yeah, each NGB. Like so if you're like wanting to go to goalball, you wanted to go to football, they also have their own qualifications. Uh, goalball obviously is a bespoke sport, but football is geared up more towards the mainstream. But if you've got the fundamentals of football you know that's the same sort of thing they're looking for. Yeah. So how widely available is the activity? It would be with Gold Ball, my son used to go to Gold Ball, but he used to have to go to sort of, like 20 miles away to go. Um, yeah. Where are you based? We're in Sussex. Sussex, okay. I'd it will be dependent upon the area you live in mm -hmm. because you've got some areas that are really affluent of all different sports around them, but it is very much a, it is a growing um, kind of area, and that's one of our key roles to work with the NGBs to encourage more people to set up their own sessions, turn mainstream sessions into inclusive as well, so we can play together. So how could we find out what if any of these are available? So on our website, again, BBS's website, there's an activity finder. You put your postcode in, and it tell you all the clubs in your area. Okay. So if you put any sport, you can basically leave any sport blank and it'll tell you everything that's in your area. But if you can't find something, it doesn't necessarily not mean it's there, but we, if you contact us again through the website, we can find something or at least point you to the NGB to tell you this is coming and it's coming at this time. Okay, great, thank you. Yeah. I've just got some information, if that's all right to share. Yeah, of course, um, yeah. Some of the young people that I work with and the adults, lose their confidence to do exercise as they're getting older or their, their sight changes. So a lot of had some success with personal trainers, so they use their pink money to pay for a personal trainer who comes to the home, who does some mobility exercises or strength training, whatever it is that, that needs for these young people or adults. That builds up the confidence to, for them to then go on and access further activities like that. So I just thought I'd mention it because there's other routes into getting into these. Sometimes it's about the confidence to, to take part in these. And I know that balance is, is a big issue for some families with youngsters with more from all adults. And that's why the personal trainer route sometimes helps, especially if they don't want to go to the gym. It's a good starting point. Yeah, definitely. That's why we have an active at home program for that reason. So, so it's not that. so you yeah. can gain your confidence. Now we're really proud. Three of our five um, PTs have actually got vision impairment themselves. So again, they probably have the understanding. And our lives are kind of two way conversations. So if you can't do that exercise, they will tell you adaptation on the live to kind of say this is what you can do. You can do that at home then to continue. So yeah. So the next step, if you want to come and try some of the sports, we've got a full range, or ask any more questions, please do come next door. We're literally just out this door and it's straight to the right. So see you in the room soon. Thank you. Cheers.